It's the OK Football Luton Town Show. Good to have you all along with us. I'm here in the world famous Bricklayer's Arms in the heart of High Town, and I'm joined by my co-hosts. I got Beefy, I got Phil, I got producer Matt. And we're here to talk about everything that's been going on around Luton Town these past few weeks because apologies there was no Luton Town show last week but we're back we're back here in the brickies right so how are we all doing chaps I'm very happy it was such a good day for me yesterday that I'm very happy about how Luton are playing at the moment <laughs> well said w- that was... was was that okay did I read that okay <laughs> Uh, I think I'm, uh, this could be quite therapeutic. Yeah. I think I think that we all probably want to get a few things off our chest. I think that our our sort of script area is very much open to interpretation <laughs> today because we're all got quite a lot of anger. So stay tuned, folks. Yeah. I'm doing alright. I've started playing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I started replaying Witcher Three, uh, and I'm going to go see the Luton Town ladies hopefully win against Enfield Town this afternoon. I think they will win. I'm, I'm going to start playing Witcher winning. 3 now again. I've got it on the Steam Deck. It's so good, isn't it? It's so good. Oh, definitely. And oh. Gent, I love playing Gent on there. Just Gwent, Gwent is the best. Hours, hours wasted. I've ever played. Yep. <laughs> anyway. Uh, it, it, it's, the, it's the middle-aged men talk <laughs> about playing football. Uh, talk about playing video game podcast. Right. Uh, that uh, would well, actually be better, though, wouldn't it? Because then we wouldn't have to watch Luton every week I and know. feel this way. <laughs> oh, well. Now it's time to round up everything that's been going on around Kenworth Road this past week. And we should talk about the games, I suppose. It's our new segment. I heard it through Rowan's Grapevine. I heard it through Rowan's Grapevine. Shimona. Right, chaps. So we weren't here for Plymouth 3, Luton 1. Well, we actually were here. We're here in the Brickies watching it. Um, It's pretty bad, but we don't need to talk about it. It was poor from Luton. It was a sign of the things to come, really. And then that was compounded with Luton 2, Oxford 2. That happened Tuesday night. And we all were quite optimistic in in a sense. We were like, right, this... This is where we turn now, it around. Now the season turns. Yeah. Starting yeah. now. But no, it did not start now. No, no. it did not. Um, positives from Oxford. First half hour, we looked pretty good. Looked like the Luton of old, 22-23 yeah, promotion. Yeah, there was bite, there was battle. And it, it's actually the hope that kills you, isn't it? What happened at half time? What uh, it just looked like a completely different team. They look, they came out from half time looking like they'd never played a football match together, and I genuinely don't know how you manage that in fifteen minutes. It's really impressive. Could you could you argue the the first goal from Oxford kind of killed any momentum? That was a game? that was a tight goal though. That was a great was, goal, and you know the, the the swift interplay. But in reality, was it kind of a false dawn because? We scored two goals from two mistakes from Oxford, did, which yeah. was which was progress because we capitalised on the mistakes rather than against Plymouth, where we failed to capitalise on nailed on mistakes. Well, we we rode our luck as well against Oxford. Remember, we mm. had a, a shot off the line that Mengi got. We had a couple of saves from Kaminsky. And this is all in the first half, by the way. So you, we we did waste chances. Jordan Clark put one wide when he had three quarters of the goal to go for. Granted, he got he got his goal. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm, uh, thought that he he played particularly well in that first half um but the reality of it was is that we flattered to deceive and the, and and straight after half time i know that the conditions were weren't great but we we looked like sunday league footballers we we didn't have a good first touch the ball kept skidding underneath our feet like why weren't it was we very out? wet yeah but why don't we go out a couple of minutes earlier and actually get used to the conditions like it, it there's just simple things that you could do and and the reality of it is that wasn't happening to oxford Oxford I know they were playing with the same ball on the same, the same pitch. Ball on the same pitch, shooting against the wind, and yet they managed to absolutely ping one through through us from about four or five passes and finish off a nice, nice tight move. So I'm not buying into the to the fact other than the fact that we're just not very good with the ball. We're just not. Mm-hmm. Like I, I was down there at Plymouth. It was horrible. It was horrible to watch. Like we 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 made a couple of chances. Adebayo should have scored the header. Um, and ultimately, there was a little bit of, of luck with regards to how, how Plymouth scored their first goal. Like it was just a small toe that deviated the ball that meant that everything in that area went went wrong. Yeah. But the reality of it is, is that I'm looking at the, the last three games, and I said this to you guys in our chat yesterday, we've conceded seven and we've had eight shots of our own on target. 
Like that, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. <coughs> you know, in um, Da Vinci Code, there's the fella with the white hair who like gets into Paul, the self. Paul Bettany. Yeah, gets into the self-flagellation. Yeah. That's like watching Luton at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is like kneeling in front of a cross and whipping yourself. It is so bad. We are just awful. And I, I can't put my finger on why, because it's largely the same team that played with all that belief and all that attacking potential last year. A couple of minor changes. You know, you've lost Ross Barkley. That's a massive loss, absolutely. But the core of the squad is the same. What has gone wrong? I well, don't know. It doesn't explain. It, it. I've been struggling to think why the team all of a sudden have lost all cohesion. Because... There aren't too many changes from last year, yes. Obviously, Sambi and Ross in the middle. But there's no reason for the defence not to being able, not being able to pass to each other. Doing no, the basics. So. I don't think some of them want to be here. But the reality Well, McGuinness only just got here. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, yeah. That's all, yeah, I mean, fair well, enough. Why, maybe, why, maybe, why can't he pass, like, yeah, well, five, ten yards? I mean, I, I, I'll shoot myself in the foot here because, like I said, Mengi's had a couple of things come off the line. But to me, like I said, going back to the Plymouth game, he fucked up in the middle, and then it was like, oh, I can't bother with this, I'm going off. I mean, but he's fit enough for the next game. Like, I, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it at all. I, I, it's starting to really piss me off, like, how poor we are. We are so gettable. It is insane. And it's, n- it's no wonder that, that Edwards is thinking, right, I'll keep putting five at the back, and it will give us a little bit more give us a little bit more steel at the back there, and have Nakamba in front of him, and have Kraus, who's sort of more defensive-minded, um, Playing him as a uh, playing him as an eight though, yeah, yeah or a, t- a ten, yeah. ten at times. Jordan Clark is a false nine. Yeah. What, yeah. what it's, is it's happening? Just, it, it's it's a shit show. Let's be honest, it's an absolute state at the minute, and we just can't stop conceding. Is is there maybe a talking point around kind of our passing completion percentage? <laughs> that we were rock bottom of the. Well, th- you're talking about the one from I'm the game. The I'm actual talking game talking about yesterday. The specific one you're from the game yesterday yeah. that I saw. If you look at the season, yeah. if you look at the whole season for pass completion stats and possession, where at the beginning of the season, Rob was waxing lyrical about, you know, we're going to be playing mm. free flowing football. It's going to be beautiful. And we're bottom of the table for pass completion. Mm. We are near the bottom for possession. And when we do have possession, it's just. Bing, 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 bing between the back three and then lump it forward like a catapult. Um, and uh, I'd love to see kind of how many of those failed passes have led to goals against us. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like it's going to be a shock. Well, number. you know what? Let's go. Let's talk about Sheffield United to Luton nil. So those failed passes should have put Sheffield United at least 10 up. Like, thank yeah. God they, they they looked incredible yesterday. Yeah, they did. But they we did. made them look incredible because we kept passing the ball to them like our defenders would get the ball, it would go out to Burke, it would go across to McGuinness, it would go to Mengi, back to McGuinness, then McGuinness would pass it straight to a Sheffield United player. I think we had 19 touches in the Sheffield United half yesterday. <laughs> Sheffield United had a pass completion from the first half of 91%. Ours was 70%. They played us off the park yesterday. Yeah, they did. And I look, I I have a lot of Sheffield United fans giving me grief because they're like, oh, why well, aren't you rating Chris Wilder? You know what? It wasn't a Chris Wilder masterclass. It was a Rob Edwards disaster class. Um, I think. And we we finished we finished ten points ahead of Sheffield United last year. Sorry, I'm not done yet. Look, look, <laughs> we, we we finished ten points ahead of Sheffield United. They had a, they went out. They had a great window. They brought in some absolute yeah, top players. Harrison Burrows, one of the brightest players in the EFL. Harry he Suter, was on the bench yesterday. He was on the bench. Gus Hamer <laughs> was, on the bench, was on the bench as well. Like they're resting their players for the game against Leeds because they know that's going to be a battle. They knew that Luton would just fold. Well, I, I was going to say it more poetically, would turn up and just flop on the pitch and just sort of, <laughs> just sort of <laughs> writhe around on the pitch doing nothing for 90 minutes. Um, but, yeah, I, I think even the most ardent Luton fans can't defend what they saw yesterday. Uh, well, no, they can and have. They're, they've been trying. Yeah, because did you not see Lenny Lawrence football? You know, my first season following Luton, we were relegated. Yeah, Lenny I, Lawrence. I lived through Lenny Lawrence, David Kohler. I lived through John Gurney. We lived through 30 points. We lived through the conference. It's fine to be angry about this. 
you don't there's no membership card at, uh, and the point at which you can suddenly criticize Luton if you started following us this year welcome and if you think it's crap say it's crap and don't listen to these fellas who are like you car you don't know the history bollocks i've been watching Luton for 31 years and for some reason this not long feels, enough mate not long enough not this, long this enough. feels worse <laughs> and i don't know why maybe the passage of time has given me rose tinted glasses about how bad it was under cola or, or gurney but this th- there's just something so gutless about us at the minute and it just feels dreadful the the for me there's been like a an energy vacuum in in that um changing room it feels like yeah. we lost the likes of berry and and pots in in the summer and with that, as much as Pelly gets a lot of the credit for the sort of ethos of the club, we lost a lot of la- long-standing players that have been at this club for quite some time. Mm-hmm. We've lost a lot of backroom staff that have been at this club for quite some time. The expectations have changed. Th- that's the reality of it, is that you we are probably at the level that we should be in terms of championship, in terms of like the size. We're s- some would argue that we're even still punching a little bit now. But the reality of it is that the, c- the way that the club wants to go as a direction. You look at those stadium plans is that we need championship football at the very at the very worst, right? And you look at how our players fight on the pitch anymore. Like, the only player that I think that is... Um, well, maybe there's a couple, but I think Kaminsky's been playing excellently he's because had he's been to. so heavily exposed. Yeah, he's had to. I think that Rhys Burke, the fact that he's picked up two cards for dissent, shows, and the fact that he came out yesterday and spoke... I, that I, I, that was an interesting yeah. one. Do you, do you think that that means Rob Edwards has lost the dressing room? I think if it's not already, it's close because yeah. it, uh, players don't like losing. They're, like they're 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 born winners. Like they are absolutely competitive to to the ninth degree. But the way and the way he like said it, we need to yeah. go back to basics. It's something yeah, yeah. that we've been saying, you know, embrace the fundamentals. Yeah, but that's the thing. I, I think that we are uh, all of our fundamentals and all of that fight. I mean, somewhere I can't remember which which um, which Twitter account it was, but they they showed the um, the playoff semi final. Um, second leg with Drame in the top corner um, and how the whole stadium was went nuts because he won a <laughs> won a goal kick or put he won a corner, goal, uh, corner uh, goal uh, kick yeah, throw in yeah it was Can't it remember. was yeah it was up near the Kenny end wasn't it but um but the point is that that fight just it's gone it's just not there at the minute and it's and it's heartbreaking to watch because you're watching the games at the minute and you're you're right we're just sort of turning up and folding and it's it's wouldn't it's really depressing there's a bit of a tragedy in it isn't there because football managers as a group aren't particularly likable um i don't think for we, all we got a very likable well one. and this, but this is it for all for all his quality i i probably yeah. wouldn't have gone for a pint with nathan jones but i'll go for a pint with rob edwards any day of the week he seems like an absolutely lovely bloke but it's not working and how long do we keep flogging this horse? Um, we've got an international break now. Hopefully, that's the time to rebuild. Well, three and a half more years, mate. So, yeah, <laughs> well, three and a half, yeah. Uh, how many times have we said that this year already? Oh, it'll come good. It's not coming good. We said about the fixtures it, it, since the last international break to this one, and said about yeah, how these are the winnable ones. To, to win. yeah. Yeah. yeah, we won two, but we were not convincing. And that, that's the other thing. Like, when was the last time we played well? Like, we actually. I would argue for the first half an hour against Portsmouth, we looked good, but we didn't put our chances away. Mm. But that, I would argue, is the only part of the season, only half of the season, where we've actually looked quite good. Well, Other than that, we've 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 been awful. And and going back to the Sheffield United game, sorry, I, I forgot to mention earlier on. Like, I I kind of feel like Sheffield United are going about it the right way. They've they've completely upheaved their team. They've got a completely new squad, really. And the reality of it is, is that they know that it's it's a marathon, not a sprint. They made six changes to their starting lineup yesterday. Still, school does. And the reality of it <coughs> is, is that regardless of what people think about Wilder, is that he's made he's been quite intelligent there because he knows it's a marathon, not a sprint, and he's changing things up. Like we're changing things up because of injuries all the while. We constantly got injuries, um, and the players that are on the pitch just aren't simply aren't doing it. I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> I said it was going to well, be therapeutic the today. The I'm things going we at it. but the things we changed up yesterday were wrong. What yeah. is Reese Burke playing as a right midfielder? Yeah. Jordan Clark playing up top without a bye. What is happening? You doubt he scored once on the right hand <laughs> side at Bramall Lane. So yeah. the stars align. He will do it again. Well, surely, Mark. And poor that. and poor rule was you got a feel for him. Yeah, young right back, and we stick him as a left back. He's completely yeah. exposed. Against Rack Saki, and look what in the one, yeah, one of the best in the league. Uh, just ridiculous. It was absolutely mad. Uh, I, I don't mind Reese Burke at right back because he is a very progressive defender. The one that annoyed me was Doughty playing right wing, mm. and that interview that Doughty did. Bef- the, the club released an interview just before mm. the game, and 
they were like, Dowdy, how are you feeling today? And he was like, win, win, we're going to win. <laughs> and, you know, come on, you're just giving ammunition at that yeah. point. And then you put Doughty on the right wing, you put Victor Moses on the left wing, considering Victor Moses, all his good work for us has been on the right wing. Yeah, let's stick him on the left wing so he can cut in. How as a just, winger as well. As a winger. How about you just stick him, keep him out where he's been absolutely fine? Um Oh, yeah, yeah, it's just, it's painful. It is it really is. painful. It is. Um, but where where do we go from here? Because the club aren't going to sack Rob Edwards. He's far too expensive. David Wilkinson came out and said, we will back him. I don't want to say we'll back him through hell and high water because that's what Scott Duxbury said about Rob Edwards um, when they appointed him down the road. Mm. But... It's at the point where uh, even the not, even the board have to. That's not quite what Wilkinson said, though, is it? He said we're not going to make any no, no, rash no, any decisions, knee jerk reactions. Knee jerk reactions, and we've we've won what four games in thirty. It's not a knee jerk reaction at this point. We've lost seventeen in twenty six league go. games, and yes, part of that was the Premier League. I know that. I'm not yeah, that, but. 17 losses, not 17 not wins, 17, 17 losses, losses yeah. in 26. But a big part of this is the fact that when we were in spitting distance of survival last season, Tanky. Wh- why didn't Rob Edwards take a, a thought? Like, I don't, I don't mind that we got relegated. I was expecting relegation at the beginning of the season. Mm. But why not go for pragmatism over performance? Because points on the board were more important than building the brand Rob Edwards. Look at me, I'm Rob Edwards. Look at the football I play. They I mean, work for Vincent Company. He, I, he went and got his big money move. I don't think Rob Edwards would do that. I genuinely think he's a nice guy who's committed to the club. And this is just the way he wants us to play. And it doesn't work. Um, and it is a bit tragic because, like I say, I genuinely think he is 100% committed to this job. But it's such a big drop-off from last season where we actually showed fight. Well, but as, as Phil said, it could be a case of the players don't really want to be here. The, the confidence has gone. That's the big issue. This is a team with zero confidence. And that momentum in football is so important and it's just missing. And the only way to get it back is to scrap out some wins. But we don't even look capable of doing that. Um, so we get to the point where a change has to be made. Yeah. Okay, well, let's uh, have a look at what else has been going on around Kenilworth Road this week. So the the power core plans were out, and to be honest, the you know we we were talking about the game for so long. Let's just uh, do the headlines. Um, Two thousand seats of hospitality. There are going to be three lounges: silver, gold, platinum. Pretty bitty big bollocks. Plus, plus a tunnel club. Plus a tunnel club. Yeah, it's pretty bitty big bollocks. It after is. we said none <laughs> of this Billy Bollock, <laughs> none of this Billy big bollocks stuff. Yeah, but, it's but here we go. It's like a Billy commercial airline. You make you make your money at that end. So why? Yeah, not? of course. Why not do it? Of course. I. Um, if you don't want to go to hospitality, yeah. don't go to hospitality. There'll be twenty twenty or thousand aff- other seats. Can't you can afford hospitality, mate. Yeah, as long as we don't get you, priced you out you of can't. this. Yeah, I know I can't, <laughs> but I'm sure all of uh, all of the mates of the club can, and uh, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll be tunnel club every week. Yeah. Yeah. What could be better than a three course meal and not watching the football? Because I don't really want to watch it at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, stock of away shirts is back in, right? Yeah, yeah. I went yeah. into the shop yesterday, and it's a, it's a little bit of a sorry sight to be honest with you. I feel really sorry for the guys that are in there because they've got stock. Don't get me wrong. Like, go and get go and get your second, and third strip. You're away in third strips. Like, they're, they're in there unless you're a double XL. Um, and then they don't have that. And there, um, there are so quite a lot of double XL football <laughs> yeah, fans as well. There are. Unfortunately, I uh, I walked out without a shirt because I didn't have it in a double XL. But um, yeah, it, it's um, it's one of those ones where you you kind of look at them and you kind of think, yeah, they're trying to flog the same old stuff just what in whatever sizes they've got. Um, there was about four or five staff now. I felt really bad for them because I was walking around. Once I realised that I didn't want a shirt, and you know what it's like. You go into your club and you want to get something with the badge on. You just want to get something, anything. And I, tr- I looked at the uh, the Bedford, the orange one, and yeah. the double XL, and that was like wearing a corset. You do not want to imagine it's, it's what I look like in that yeah. changing room. <laughs> 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 so it's um, it, it was just one of those ones. I was just like, oh, it just seems a bit a bit sad and a bit sort of like the stocks stocks not great. But I mean, like I say, the, the the shirts are in there. There's a few sale shirts on the on last year's away strip as well. So if you've got a spare bit of spare dosh, go and spend it on them. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get a few more seats in our hospitality area if we if you do so. Yeah, an interesting <laughs> one. It looks like the bobbers has been uh, pulled up as well. Like all the seats have been uprooted. Mm. Safe standing, maybe. 
Hmm. Maybe. Maybe they're just being refitted, fit an extra row in because it's yeah, pretty roomy. It can't be no, too it is not pretty you know, you've roomy. Got, I, you've I got at least this much. Oh, at the front. Yeah, I sat there for a Bolton game last yeah. season in the FA Cup. Yeah. There is no leg room, no. none, and you can't stand up. You try and stand up, someone comes and whips you. Yeah. And he's like, oh, sit down. How dare you stand up? So it, like the Kenny then. Yeah, it, it can't be too much. bad. It can't be too bad because ultimately they've sold tickets for the next couple of home games, so it's not going to be drastic. Oh yeah, they, uh, so. probably it could be safe standing, so. could be a refit. Who yeah, knows? Yeah. Yeah. But let, let's have a bit of fun, shall we? Because now it's time for OK Football's Wheel of Games. It's time for the wheel. Wheel of games. Wheel of games. Wheel of games. Wheel of games. It's time to spin the wheel. Spin. Play a choice. Should we, should we do the quick fire quiz round? I think we should. Let's do yeah. quick the, fire the, quiz. It's the new, so we've renamed it. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, do you want to tell us what we're calling it this yeah, week? Yeah, we've decided to call this the Liam Walsh round, so it's going to be the speed round. It's going to last 36 seconds rather than <laughs> being the old Benny Lightning round. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for giving us some content, Liam, but other than that, fucking sort it out, man. So, here's the speed round. I have the cards right here. And uh, let's put a timer on, what, 36, 36 seconds? seconds. 36 seconds. It's time to play <laughs> the Liam Walsh <laughs> lightning round. <laughs> so good. Right, how do I set this? Uh, I don't think I can have seconds. Let's do it the other way around. Go, uh, go stopwatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stopwatch, okay. Right. Read the first question, then hit it. Bang. Yeah. I'll give them a shuffle. Is it just like hands up? Like Do we just shout? You can work. You shout. can work together. Oh, okay. 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 Okay, okay and uh, I have definitely not taken these from Trivial Pursuit Masters Edition. Noted. Pink right. on each one. What three colours feature on the flags of Senegal, Cameroon, Mali, and Benin? Yellow, it's green, and red. red. Yeah. yeah. Bruce Willis played boxer Butch Coolidge in what film? Not seen it. Nope. No. Pass. Pulp Fiction. Uh, of course, yeah. How many jurors are present during criminal trials in Scotland? 10, 12, 14, or 15? 12. 12, isn't it? It's 15. 15. Uh, A museum dedicated to which U.S. writer can be visited in Havana? Which U.S. writer? No, no. No, no idea. Ernest, Ernest Hemingway. Hemingway. Yay, I'll give you that one. What brown and white striped ri- rainforest dwelling mammal is the only living relative of the giraffe? Brown and white striped. Oh, you're never going to get this. Rainforest. This is the oh, Cappy. No. Right, that was 42 seconds. I think you got two. I rode happy. I think we got two. Two's the record. Wow. That's good. Well done, boys. That's well good. done. Right. I think that was a <laughs> roaring success. <laughs> yeah, thank it's you, hot. Liam. <laughs> Cheers, Liam. And Liam, if you're watching, I hope you're watching. What are you doing? What was that? <laughs> I mean, 36 seconds. I know it was wet, but w- w- why? why? Why the scissor hold? He was told it's to not get wrestling. stuck in. Yeah, get stuck get, in. Get My stuck goodness. in. Let, let them know you're there. Just just don't, okay? It's hard enough. Right, now it's time for Mark the Hatter's Super Question of the Week. Mark the Hatter, he's put a question to us. Mark the Hatter, he's put a question to us. So, thank you, Mark, for the question. The question is, the Football Writers Association Footballer of the Year an annual award given to the footballer who's adjudged to be the best of the season in English football. The winner is selected by a number of journalists based throughout England, and it's one of the most prestigious player awards in the English game. Most recently, the award was won by Phil Foden, and the year prior to that, Erling Haaland. Can you name the only Luton Town player to have won the Footballer of the Year award, and can you name the year the player won the award? Go, 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 go. <laughs> Bang. So Sid Owen, and I don't know the year. I think maybe he was quite old. He was 35 at the time. I think it might be 1963 or 64. You're close. It was the 58-59. Oh, yeah, the season Luton got to yeah. the FA Cup final, and Sid Owen was fantastic. Yeah. Lovely. Fun, was fun fact great for one. you. So Sid Owen, uh, it was in the ni- yeah, 1958-59 season. He's the ninth in all-time Luton appearances and played 423 games for the club. He made three England caps and played in the 1954 World Cup. He's also player manager for Luton's 1959 FA Cup final 2-1 loss to Nottingham Forest. 
Yeah, to be honest, you know, Billy Bingham scored in every round of that FA Cup run. So I'd say Billy Bingham was robbed. He really <laughs> was, yeah. Sid Owen who? No, uh, Sid Owen, absolute <laughs> club legend. But Billy Bingham should have got some notoriety for that he, FA he Cup He just run. did. Yeah. He yeah, just there did. You go. But Matt, but Matt, why is this podcast different from all other podcasts? I don't know, Molly. Why is this podcast different from all other podcasts? Because, because there's, there's a, a joke, joke in, in here. here. What do you call a French man wearing sandals? Philippe Fallop. Okay, here we go, guys. So, a young boy walks into a hairdresser's, and the hairdresser quietly tells the customer, this kid is the dumbest kid in the world. Watch and see. So, the barber then places a five-pound note in one hand and two-pound coins in the other. He calls the boy over and he says, which one do you want, kid? The boy takes, takes the two pounds and leaves. See what I mean? The barber says, he never learns. Later, as the customer's leaving, he notices the same boy coming out of the ice cream shop. Hey, kid, can I ask you something? Why'd you pick the two pound over the five pound note? The boy, enjoying his ice cream, says, oh, if I took the note, the game would be over. Hey, (laughs) good lad. Uh, Good one. (laughs) I did know that one, but great, great joke, great joke. Right, now it's time to look ahead to our next game against Watford. And we play the Sluga Six. So, uh, this is our predictor league, the Sluga Six. Uh, we play alongside contributors from other opposition podcasts uh, with a view to predicting our way to the top of the league to make a charitable donation at the end of the season. Last week, uh, Jimmy played with us uh, from the Blades Ramble, and he managed to very predictably get two points for predicting that Sheffield United (laughs) would turn us over. Um, He scored the same points as me. I also got two because I suck hard at this game. Uh, Ollie got three. Matt, you got six points. And um, Beefy, you got seven because you hit the nail on the head for the Luton game yesterday. So you got six points just from that. Um, just an, uh, just a, uh, a little bit of a nod. Keep your eye on our socials and my wonderful uh, screen grabs. Your, your ICT, <laughs> your, my skills. ICT skills um, for uh, for our score predictions. There for like younger there. listeners, that that is IT. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it hasn't been ICT were since two thousand one. <laughs> were you eating a Werther's original while you took that <laughs> screenshot? <laughs> or in your car, do you have that tin of like hard boiled sweets? I've got a tin of CDs. <laughs> 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 um, so, so yeah, basically, we'll, we'll keep an eye out on the socials. We'll be uh, we'll be interviewing with uh, someone from the opposition podcast next week that happens to be from Watford, and that leads us to um, the first game. I mean, I haven't decided the the games because it's in a couple of weeks' time. But yeah, we, take a break we, from football. <laughs> yeah, one thing we do know is that we're hosting Watford, so uh, that's uh, that's our next game. I yeah. I was dreading it. My first year of sixth form when they beat us four 0 and I went to school in Hemel Hempstead to Catholic school out there so everyone was a Watford fan and that we we knew it was going to be bad but we didn't know it was going to be that bad they were 4-0 up after 35 minutes or something weren't they and it was just dreadful and I can see that happening again and there was this lad James Norris at school he was a Watford fan and he just would not shut up about it for months and I reckon he's going to text me after the game when we lose 4 or 5 nil again and it's just going to be like reliving my childhood. I had no idea you were so young because we lost 4 nil a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, this yeah, was no, they were ni- singing this happened again. 97, 98 maybe yeah. that we lost 4 nil. Yeah, no, they, like were sing- they were singing to us like, like, yeah. like it's happened again. It's even happened again even winning two 0 and going on to get promoted made no difference. It made it made no difference. Yes, we had a great time in the Premier League. We went down, but at the end of the day, we're going into this on absolutely disastrous form. I remember the four with, nil with Watford last time. In good form, yeah, in good form. Like they did well to turn around uh, that the result. That's the thing. Uh, that's, what, that's what we're looking for. A reaction. Reaction. Like you look at them, they, they went. Uh, they went away to Preston. Like they fair were play terrible. To all, yeah. Fair play to all those fans, by the way. Um, as much as it, it kills me to say that, but you go away midweek to Preston, yes. and then you get turned over three 0 Though I mean, those poor sods. Like not a short trip, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. But then you look at the reaction. I mean, they're they're playing again in a tough, tough fixture against Borough. They're one 0 down after like seventy five minutes or so, and they turn it round. There's there's a reaction there. That's mm-hmm. what we're all craving. 
we're craving a reaction. We're craving some football. But and we thought is, we were, worrying we thought we were going to have a reaction against Plymouth. We thought there'd be a reaction against Oxford. Mm. We thought there'd be a reaction. I'm just out of expecting we didn't reactions. Think be a reaction against Sheffield United. <laughs> no. I thought I we'd turn up because it was uh, you know a bigger game. I thought. With the start to the season that we've had, oh come on, we're back at the beginning of the podcast now. Yeah. Uh, I thought because of the the you know the players who, the teams we were playing against, who perhaps our players perceived as oh they're beneath us, maybe they'd raise their game for, you know, mm. a big team like Sheffield United. But there was no reaction. No, no. Wasn't. It was actually the worst performance of the season. Yeah, it was and, by a long way. And we need a reaction now against Watford because the stands are going to be toxic. He, he, if if we get turned over at home uh, in an embarrassing way, if we put in a performance like we did yesterday against Sheffield United, then I dread to think what's going to happen. I dread to think what's going to happen in those stands because there's been videos surfacing of, of people questioning Rob Edwards quite, quite uh, vocally at the end of the game. There's been boos at full-time whistles even against Oxford. It's been a difficult, difficult time. If we get turned over and get our tummies tickled by Watford. Tummies tickled. <laughs> We're screwed. <laughs> could you, could you cool? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it feels like could happen at the minute because yep, we are does. not good. We're not good. And there's almost like a, you know when you turn and you look because there's been an accident on the motorway and everyone stops to rub a neck. There's like this morbid fascination about what a- is actually going to happen at the end of the Watford game if it goes as wrong as you say mm. and it is yeah it's not going to be a friendly wander around for a round of applause after the game um it's going to be nasty I think mm. um, I'm, I'm not really calling worried. that on by the way I want to be clear no no we are not we I are just, not I inciting genu- I just genuinely worry about the the reaction of the fans because th- this this game for Luton and Watford fans provokes feelings that no other fixture in football does. We can say about rivalries we've had with with other teams that you, people will mention the Millwall like um, rivalry and um, over the years because what well, in our years in the wilderness so to speak we even had a little bit of a rivalry with the likes of Stevenage and Wickham as as like local rivals but nothing nothing compares to Watford and I just I beg the players and I ble- beg the staff like put in everything you possibly can you've got a two week break do your diligence do your homework and make sure that as best as possible we at least are not beaten because it, it will turn really really sour and I don't want to see that yeah what well, you know you wouldn't think just six months ago you wouldn't have thought this would be the situation right now. Two months ago, I wouldn't have thought no, that. No, I would have been no. saying, yeah, bring them on, um, but not now. You know, six weeks ago on this show, we were talking about just relax, it will come good. Mm-hmm. The quality is there with the team and now we're just... Out of ideas. Yeah. They are like, like they are on the pitch. Mm. It's, yep. We're befuddled. We yeah. are. It's horrendous. Mm. But I think that's us for this week. If you're watching on our YouTube, why not give this video a like? We're, we're not always this depressed, I can assure <laughs> you. And uh, while you're here as well, subscribe for even more Luton Town content. And as always, a big thank you to our host, the Bricklayers Arms, in the heart of Hightown in Luton. It's right next to the station. Wherever you are in the country, why not come down? Check out the board games night. Come and challenge Beefy at the quiz night. It's, you uh, You won't win. Well, you just saw him doing the, the <laughs> Liam Walsh yeah. run of, uh, of of questions of whatever it is. We haven't decided on the name yet, have we? Um, yeah, it wasn't that great, but, you know, challenge beefy. Red card rush. Red, Red card, card rush. rush, there we go. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, and as always, a thank you to our audio partners, Black Star Amplification and Carry On for making sure that we sound great. And also a big shout out to our pod sponsors, The Record Shop in Amersham, wherever you are in the country. Head on down to Amersham if you collect vinyl and mention the OK Football Show and you might even get a discount. Just be nice about it and don't come complain to us in the comments if you weren't <laughs> nice about it and they were like, we're not giving you a discount. If you're nice, they will give you a discount if you mention us, OK? But thank you all for tuning in and there'll be no show next week because thank God. God, it's international break. Who thought we'd ever say I, that? I, know. <laughs> I don't want to watch another football match ever again. <laughs> um, it, it's international break. Get down to your local non-league team. Or ladies game. Or ladies. Ladies in the third round of the FA Cup. Qualifying Ooh. rounds against St. Albans City. It's going to be a feisty Very one. I, I love I love down at yeah. uh, you know, St. Albans. It's great. Great stadium. But thank you all for tuning in. <laughs>